As always, welcome to a new exciting tutorial. Today we'll be taking a look at a very interesting technique to change the lighting in your portrait images in Photoshop. We will make use of Photoshop's 3D capabilities, so to follow along with this tutorial you will need at least Photoshop version 5.5. As you can see here, we have two images. The one on the left is a 3D object, and the one on the right is uh, the final image. So um, the 3D object has been matched to his head and is now overlaid on top of the main image. If you change the artificial lighting in the 3D workspace, um, these changes will be automatically applied to your image. And as you can see here, this works for every gender, age, or skin color, it doesn't matter. It is very easy to create this effect and it doesn't require much time because Photoshop does most of the work for you. But I think you can achieve quite impressive results with it. Of course you can achieve a similar effect with just dodging and burning. But this technique will make your life a lot easier. In certain cases it will definitely decrease the time you spend simply painting on your image. And compared to traditional techniques which enable you to change the lighting in your image, it is not only faster, but thanks to Photoshop's great 3D implementation, it gives you everything you need to make changes pretty quickly. And uh, all the tools are designed to give you a very intuitive workspace. So now let's take a look at how to create it. For this tutorial we will use the self-portray of Chris Skeech, I found it recently on Flickr. Um, it's licensed under the Creative Commons license and we will simply download it in original size. Um, of course, all links to images and resources used in this tutorial are down in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, now we will drag this image into Photoshop. And um, first make sure to save your project files. It's pretty important to save every time um, because Photoshop tends to crash sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Now let's rename the background layer to original because it's our original image and we want to keep it, make it red. Now let's import our 3D object into Photoshop. It's a 3D face model I found on the free the free3dmodels.com and modify it a bit to optimize it uh, for workflow. The object is high resolution. It can be used for male and female portraits. It doesn't matter. It works for both. Now let's try to match the rotation, scale and translation of our 3D model to uh, our portrait. If we want to make our lives a bit easier, we can decrease the opacity of our 3D layer. Um, this will allow us to better match um, the facial features. As you can see here, this is a pretty tedious process. It takes quite some time, but if you want to get good results, you should really spend this time. If you want to have a bit more precise control over your rotation or scale or translation, just manually change the values in the properties panel. And play a bit with the opacity. This will definitely help you to get uh, everything right. And uh, I think now I'm finished uh, roughly lining him up. Select our 3D object and um, make the diffuse color completely white and play a bit with uh, the shine value. Also um, decrease the specular intensity so um, our object isn't that glossy. And now if you select um, the light source with um, this small icon, you can uh, disable shadow. This will remove the harsh shadows on your 3D object. And uh, with the on-screen controls, you're now able to change the light direction. Let's switch to the layers panel, select our 3D face model and convert it into a smart object. So now we will have a 2D layer 
In the next step, we'll make our 3D face match um, the original a bit better. Uh, to do this, just select the 3D face model, press Ctrl T to transform it, right click and select Warp. Now try to align our image a bit better to our original by using these control handles, um, but you don't need to be that precise. It's just a rough alignment. Just accept these changes. And now we will continue with um, better matching our facial features. Just go to Edit and Puppet Warp. This will bring up our Puppet Warp tool. Um, just increase the density a bit and uh, disable Show Mesh because um, this mesh is actually distracting in our case. And add a few control points, a few pins to change our um, image. And now try to um, warp our image so that the facial features uh, align a bit better and our um, 3D object matches our original character. This process can take some time as well, but um, be sure to, to spend this time because well, this will definitely uh, give you better results. If you're finished, um, accept the changes. And now let's continue with the next step. Select the 3D face layer and while holding Alt add a new layer mask. With the black layer mask selected, take a white brush and paint on all the parts where you can see skin color. So um, our 3D face model later appears only on these spots. Okay, now we will continue with correctly overlaying our 3D face model on top of our original image. To do this we will use another very powerful technique called frequency separation. Um, this technique is normally used for skin retouching. Um, it enables you to basically uh, separate your skin details from the main skin colors, so it can work um, pretty much non-destructively. And we will use this technique a bit differently this time. To do this, select the original image and um, make two duplicates by pressing Ctrl J. Name the bottom duplicate low frequency and the top layer high frequency. And hide the top layer and select um, the low frequency. Go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And blur your image until you um, can't see any minor details. And press OK. Then um, basically uh, unhide the high frequency layer, go to image and um, apply image. For your layer select the low frequency, set your channel to RGB and the blend mode to subtract and set your scale to 2 and the offset value to 128 and leave all other settings as they are. Press OK and this will create a kind of a high pass image based on your lower frequency and set its blend mode to linear light. And now both uh, images will effectively cancel out each other, group them, name uh, the group frequency or frequency separation. And um, if you take a closer look, even uh, zoomed in, you can't see any difference before and after, but now we've basically separated the large uh, colors um, and the small details. Now select your 3D face model and move it between low frequency and high frequency. And now you can overlay it with a multiply blend mode or the soft light blend mode. Multiply looks uh, kind of this. Um, then you have to decrease the opacity 
but uh, I think the most realistic results are achieved by using the soft light blend mode. And of course you can change the op opacity in this as well. Okay, now we can see a few small errors on our image. Uh, we will simply fix them by applying a Gaussian blur uh, on our 3D model. And now try to find a value which um, doesn't smooth out all skin details, but um, mostly gets rid of uh, these annoying um, shading issues we have. And um, this process uh, can take some time, and uh, but you can go back every time because we have a smart object and you can, of course, change this value at any time. So now you can see a big difference before and after. Okay, now we will continue um, modifying our lighting setup. To do this, um, simply double click on your smart object. This will open up um, this uh, layer in a new window. And now go to Window, Arrange and um, to Up Vertical. This will arrange both windows vertically. And um, now you can select your light and move it to any position. Hit Ctrl S to save and now you should see it updating on the right uh, image and now you can uh, experiment a bit with it make sure to save every time you you've changed something and now you can see an update but you can see some problems especially in his eyes um, for my taste they're way too dark and on this side the colors are way too strong this is caused by the soft light blend mode so let's deal um, with the eyes uh, simply select a brush um, black brush with uh, small opacity and flow and simply paint on the layer mask to uh, eliminate the effect of our 3D face model uh, in the eye area. And now you can see this um, is looking way better. Here's the layer mask. Take your time on this as well. Zoom out a bit to uh, view his whole face. This um, will definitely help to make your image more realistic. Now we will take a look at uh, our colors. Go into the Essentials workspace and add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. And um, first decrease the main saturation. And now set this blend mode to darken. This will only apply your hue and saturation in the dark parts of the image, as you can see here. It's only affecting the dark spots. But now we need to remove it from his shot, so we'll simply take the 3D face model layer mask and uh, drag it to the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And as you can see here, this only applies the desaturation to his face. If everything is looking like it should, um, go and close this dialog. So now we can play a bit with um, our lighting setup. Just uh, experiment a bit with it. Try to change light positions. And of course you can go in and change the light intensity or the light color at any time. You can even add a second light or as many lights as you want to create your own lighting setup. Just go into the 3D panel and create a new infinite light for example. In this case we want to create a rim light so um, just take this infinite light and rotate it until it looks like this and um, if you hit save this then should uh, update accordingly. I think this is uh, looking very realistic. Okay, now let's have a look on how we can optimize this technique uh, to make it look even better. This image is a very bad example. Of course it looks great, but um, as we can see here we have very harsh shadows. They are very dark and there aren't any detailed information whatsoever. And because this is just a JPEG image, it is uh, very hard to re recover these details. Um, in this case it's impossible 
So um, if we try to overlay our 3D face model on top of this, um, this will definitely look fake. So just try to avoid these images where you have uh, very strong lighting and try to use images with um, even lighting. And just like these images, um, you can't see any harsh shadows and uh, they're pretty even lit. And this will definitely make your life a lot easier. Yet another very useful tip is to shoot your images in RAW because you will get a much greater dynamic range than just shooting JPEGs and this will help you to uh, recover these uh, shadow details uh, much easier. And so try to even out the lighting in Camera Raw afterwards. But there are a few other techniques which will help you along this way. For example dodging and burning, so you can um, simply paint on top of your shadows and highlights to uh, make your image uh, look flat. Depending on your source image, this process may take some time. But as it is with everything else, the more time you spend on it, the more realistic will look your final result. And I think this concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the video description below. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and see you next time.